Let's talk more about the market expectations heading into tomorrow's high stakes trade talks. Joining us now is Rebecca Patterson, Chief Investment Officer at Bessemer Trust. Rebecca, always great to see you. Um, are you expecting anything, be it skinny, be it small, be it pared down, be it watered, whatever, <laughs> this week, I next week? I mean, it week? seems like both sides are talking about the possibility of a narrow deal, maybe more agricultural pur purchases. And, and I, th I think this is a great discussion that you all are having on the desk in terms of if we simply postpone tariffs that have been threatened but not implemented yet, how big a deal is that? Um, you know, again, short term, it's good news, right? We're removing a threat or at least postponing a threat. But does it change policy uncertainty? Does it suddenly unleash CapEx? I would argue probably not. And even if we have a small trade deal, as we go into 2020, now we have election uncertainty. If I'm a CEO and I don't have to make an investment right away, I can kind of wait and see what happens. I'm probably going to wait and see what happens. It doesn't mean the economy goes into recession. It doesn't mean the economy doesn't grow. But it probably puts a cap on things. But you've got amazing, aggressive global central bank easing providing an offset. So I'm kind of thinking about this as a muddle through economy and a muddle through market. That trade deal, whatever happens this week, who the heck knows? But I agree Trump probably wants a deal before 2020, something to put a win in that column. And that's good news at the margin. But it doesn't remove uncertainty, and it's right. not going to be enough to, to change animal spirits ahead of the election. How can that be the backdrop to a market that's a few percentage points away from record highs, though? I mean, I, do we sustain these levels, even if it's muddled through? I think it's a really good point. You know, when you think about a lot of the investors out there, people like me, right? We have balanced portfolios. We have stocks, bonds. We have lots of stuff. We're not going to be out of the equity market altogether. But you've seen in the last year, since really since the trade war started, most of the money going into equities isn't going into cyclicals. It's going into REITs. It's going into utilities. It's going into defensive equities. So people who need equity exposure are doing it in the safest way they can, which in a way is resulting in some crazy valuations for some of these sectors, which puts the bias of risk the other way. That if we have good news, just like we saw at the beginning of September, the rubber band snaps and cyclicals take off. But I don't, I don't have a high probability on that kind of good news being sustainable for now. So, Rebecca, the other uh, phenomena has been that the, because the U.S. is not in recession yet, a lot of capital is flowing into the U.S. Yeah. But what we've seen this month, we've seen consumer confidence roll over like it did this time last year. Uh, obviously, the ISM prints were not great. Mm -hmm. How much does that concern you that the U.S. is about to crack? Well, I mean, we, we all know on this desk that the U.S. is driven by the consumer. And, yes, consumer confidence has come off its highs, but with an unemployment rate, at 3.5 percent, jobless claims at a 50-year low, refis are on fire again as falling interest rates have helped mortgages. So the consumer's in a good place. If we see that manufacturing contraction, you know, if companies are laying off workers and if those laid-off workers aren't going out to eat or going to a movie or buying that new car, then we need to worry. Um, but as long as we see Fed easing and that transmission channel continues to work to help the consumer through residential, et cetera, it's hard to see a recession happening, but I'm keeping a very close eye on weekly jobless claims, consumer confidence. Those would be the big ones to me in terms of the economic data that tells us if that spillover is happening. Well, Rebecca, we, we obviously talk about U.S. China all the time because we have to. You have but, to. But are we missing the forest from the trees? Is, is there other factors at work, regardless of whether or not a deal is cast, that, that is market negative or market positive? Are we, do you think we're making too much of a U.S.-China trade deal, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, I don't, actually. I mean, you're talking about the two biggest economies in the world that are, are really, it's, it's not just about trade, as you all alluded to earlier. It's about national security. It's potentially about a capital war. When we see the bills that are being put forth, bipartisan bills, um, that could make it harder for Americans to invest in China or China to list on U.S. exchanges, it's bigger than just trade. It's really, are we going to have a multipolar world or are we going to break into two distinct blocks? And that's a longer term issue. But this is a big deal. I don't think we're wrong to focus on it. Um, but there are a lot of other drivers out there. We were just talking before the show, as we get into year end and we see all the large financial institutions have to prepare balance sheet for certain regulatory uh, targets they have to meet. Do we see a liquidity squeeze similar to what we saw at the end of last year. 
you know, there's lots of other factors out there. So I, I think what the point I'd make is you don't want to take your eye off trade, but you want to make sure you're not so obsessed with trade that you forget all the other variables that can affect things. But just to quickly connect the dots, that liquidity squeeze that happened at the end of the year, that helped precipitate the big decline that we saw in the fourth quarter. And so the thinking could be that this is yet another problem which could help precipitate some sort of decline in the fourth quarter of this year. I mean, the good news this year versus last mm -hmm. year is, you know, last year as we went into December, we still had a tightening Fed, right. right? And now we not only have an easing Fed, but we have dozens of central banks around the world that are cutting rates. So it's a very different monetary backdrop. Um, so that's good news. If we have some sort of trade deal, certainly good news. But before you get over your skis, euphoria, buying cyclicals, you know, party on, you need to remember that you still have those other variables, such as banks tightening up liquidity right. conditions ahead of year end. That might put a cap on your, your year end party. Okay. Rebecca, great to see you. Thank you. Thanks. Rebecca Patterson of Bessemer Trust. Uh, Grasso, you've been um, in the camp that, that there is some sort of a deal to be had or right. some sort of skinny deal. What happens to the utilities that you like, to those defensive areas that have gotten such um, high valuations? Yeah, because I think, of the, I flight think the money defense. has to come out of them. And I did uh -huh. get over my skis and I did buy cyclicals and I bought them too early. I mm -hmm. bought Westrock, WRK, I bought TSE, and I bought Olin Corp. And those are names that are at deep discounts. And I think you will see. A lot of profits there once the market does turn. You know, Rebecca made a really good point to Guy's kind of question. I don't know what the heck you were doing there, buddy. But, um, I was asking a oh, question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, but the point was, is like, are we focusing too much on just a China trade deal? And she said the one big differential between this quarter four versus last mm -hmm. year was that rates were going up and they were expected to go up yeah. through this year. Now they've been cut in half, the 10-year Treasury yield, um, and they're going lower. Here's the thing. The last couple times you tried buying stocks when the Fed started cutting interest rates, if you go back to 2008 and you go back to 2000, it was not a good time to buy stocks. So here we are, and both times the S&P was just off of an all-time high. So I'm just going to stay consistent with the fact over the last 18 months, every time you tried to buy the market at an all-time high, at a pri you know, to a prior high, mm -hmm. it wasn't a good time to buy the market. That's just the point. And so we are not in a, a mid-cycle adjustment that was one and done. We are in a rate-cutting cycle. Make no mistake about it. And so the longer this trade war goes on, the longer the Fed and the rest of the central banks around the world are going to be cutting interest rates.